So today I'm going to introduce kind of an interesting strategy to the consumer. So agriculture is actually a huge deal for our upstream because after we have the agriculture, for the first time we have to last food. So we don't need to hunt for the food all the day. So we have some spare time to just maybe hang around or do plants. So agriculture is really a, a big deal. However, agriculture is kind of not unique to us humans because animals can also farm. For example, this is a, some of the kind of a classic example, like the fungus growing uh, ant. But this ant, they can feed this fungus with the leaf and then they can be, uh, collect and they eat all this fungus. And there's also another type of small fish. They can kind of capture a certain type of edge and then they can eat it. And they also have kind of can pr pr uh, protect the frogs because they can get rid of all the like, competitors of the frogs so they can keep their frogs growing currently too well. So more recently, the uh, overland group that they what, one additional animal farmers, it's a micro farmers, is called the city of Tenon. So first I want to give you a brief introduction about the, this small amoeba. So at single center stage, this amoeba will feed on bacteria, as you can see, all the small bacteria. So they will eat all these bacteria. However, when the food is scarce, all these amoeba will aggregate. So thousands of amoeba cells, they will aggregate into a slug structure like this. And then they can move around to a new place where they can find new food. And then eventually they will form a protein body structure like this. Where at the top, you can see this sort of structure of thorax, which there's a plenty of spores stay inside the top. And the spore will hatch and start another life cycle. So, what our lab group found that during this whole life cycle of this social amoeba, they are actually not alone. They are actually carrying bacteria during all these life cycles. So, how do we know that? So, here is the rooting body of the social amoeba. At the top is the thorax I'm talking about. So, how do we know that they are carrying bacteria around? So, basically, we just uh, Plate, we take some of the soil rice, we place them on a petri dish, and we observe whether there is a bacteria growing. So for those who don't have a, any bacteria grow, we call them non-farmers because there's nothing at all. But for those that carry bacteria around, we call them farmers because when we try to sequence all those different bacteria, some of them are good bacteria, which means when they migrate into a new place, they actually carry food bacteria. And at the new place, the food bacteria can just divide and they have new food to feed on. But more interestingly, they also carry a group of inedible bacteria. This inedible bacteria have all those different functions. For instance, some bacteria, they actually induce this carriage of this food bacteria. And for some bacteria, they actually, the amoeba, the farmers use them as weapons to protect the food bacteria from the non-farmers. Because if you are carrying your food to a new place, but for those non-farmers, for those guys that are not carrying, you can just steal your food. So there's no benefits for carrying your food. So they need to use all different weapons to kind of protect their food. So this, this amoeba farming system, it's it's not only interesting that because it's similar to human farming, it's also because it, it gives us a great provide us a simpler system for studying host microbe interaction. Because for host microbe interactions, there are many basic questions that we need to address, like what happens, who helps, who receives, and who is cooperating, who is cheating, all those basic questions. These questions are kind of difficult to address, like in a typical host micro system, because there are hundreds or even thousands of different bacteria. It's almost 
because probably this entangle what each species are doing. But our amoeba farming system is provided a relatively simple system because both partners, both the host and the bacteria, they are single cell microbes, they are easy to capture in the lab, and it's also possible to do genetic manipulation in both sides. So we can act, we can actually test each of the bacteria partner what they are doing. Are they cooperating? Are they cheating? Are they doing anything good or bad to the amoeba host and vice versa? So in this talk, I actually I'm going to just a very simple question. Exactly where is it? So where where are these bacteria during this whole life cycle? Because why this question is important? Because for instance, the intracellular bacteria versus extracellular, that's a huge difference. Do they stay inside the host or they stay just on the surface of the host? And also, where this is also important to address question like how do they survive? And what's the business consequence of all those two both partners? In addition, there is a whole life cycle from to single cell to, to migrating slug to fruiting body. So where are these bacteria during this whole life cycle? So that's the very simple question I want to address in this talk. So I will use, yeah, of course, microscopic techniques. I will use electron microscope, microscope and confocal microscope. I will examine three different stages, like testes, slug, and protein body, and I will examine both non farmer clones and farmer clones that carry different clays and fossil debris. So the next, the next speaker, Tammy, is going to tell you more about the diversity and phylogenetics of this fossil debris, so I will not go into detail here. So the reason I choose this fossil debris bacteria here is that actually have been suggested to induce the carriage of the bacteria. So that's why I'm interested in this. So uh, let's go through the different stage. So the first one is the festive stage. So here is a EME image of a single amoeba. So actually we just need to focus on here because here is the food vacuum of the amoeba. So let's make it bigger. All these different circular structures is called MLB. So basically, after they eat the bacteria, the bacteria is being digested in this MLB. So as you can see here, for the non-farmer, all these bacteria are being digested, so there is no, no bacteria being carried around. But if we check the farmer clone, you see all those different bacteria are observed here. So they, they seem to be resistant to the cytoplasmic digestions, and for some reason they can survive within the food vacuum. So to distinguish, so we don't know exactly here actually what, whether they are food or bacteria. So to distinguish them, we label the food vacuum with green fluorescent and the bacteria with red fluorescent. So here, for the non-farmer, again, no bacteria at all. But you see the farmer's known, they are carrying both the food and the bird. And then if we go to the slug stage, again there is no bacteria in the non farmer, but these perk that still stay inside the food vacuum. They are not they, they kind of quite happy to stay inside, yeah, for whatever reason. And let's go to the final stage, the spore. So here is the spore of the amoeba for a non farmer. But if we check the farmer, they are staying inside. And if you, if you see clearly, they are actually kind of dividing here. So, which means they can exploit the host resource and divide. But it also seems that this doesn't affect the host too much because they can still hatch. So they are perfectly, they can still hatch and they can still grow, they can still eat bacteria. There is a weird uh, combination so here. So again, to, to distinguish the food versus the bird, we label them with different uh, florence. Here, the, here the interesting point is you, you see a lot of bird, but you see a very, a very small amount of uh, food bacteria here in the spot. So it seems like it's just a, 
a byproduct of, of the prokaryotes, the wood of prokaryotes, just fighting with this boss. As much as food bacteria get kind of a heat type inside the food bacteria. So, so, so to summarize, I don't want to give you a summarize. So at the factory stage, food bacteria will be getting the amoeba food bacteria which are being digested, but for the birth, it was somehow they can resist to this uh, amoeba kidney. So a reasonable assumption is that the food bacteria and the birth, they are somehow they just happen to get into the same food vacuum. Food bacteria are also can survive and it goes through the whole life cycle. So here, yeah, that's it, I think. But of course, the story always continues. I'm still working on several different uh, uh, projects, but I don't have time to share with you here. But I just can show you there's some evidence that for like for pattern of adaptation. So if we colonize a non farmer with this bird, what happened? So here is an example. This is the farmer with the clay to bird on the left, and this is the non farmer. You can see the non farmer's spore was totally destroyed by the speed to bird. And it can be even worse. So here for the for the farmer the stack structure is kind of an intact, but here is kind of a mess. So the B2 clade is actually killing the non farmer. So this is a very obvious pattern of adaptation going on. So I would like to thank all the Kyle of Dresden group and our funding agency and thanks for the meeting.